Hello everyone, this is the Freeland Fire Department. This is our first opportunity of doing some training for you while we're during this period of pandemic. Uh, I'm here today with the two Stefanski gentlemen, Larry and, and Nate, and we're going to give you some tips on working off an engine 136, especially in dealing with a major incident where large volumes of fire need to be extinguished or contained. All of our hydrants in the community are between 1,500 and 2,500 gallons per minute with a static of between 80 and 120 PSI, which provides us with a good water supply situation when we're dealing with fire situations. We should always plan on whatever incident we go to, to being able to sustain the 2,000 gallon per minute number. That's what we're looking to reach with our engine so that we get the sufficient and efficient flow from this piece of apparatus. The engine is set up in such a way that all the discharges have already been pre-indicated as to the engine pressure. There's a red stripe on there which shows you what you should be pumping at when supplying these lines. The situation with our hydrants because they are so good makes the pump operator on a one or two line incident have to really work hard to make sure he is not over pressurizing. All the lines on this apparatus are 50 PSI. They're smooth bores. So it's very easy to get over that 50 PSI nozzle pressure if you're not constantly observing your discharges. The only one that's different is on the front trash line. That's an Alcard SM30F. It's 100 PSI automatic. That's going to be changed shortly. We're getting Elkhart Chiefs on both apparatus. They're going to have the uh, 50 PSI at 185 gallons per minute and it'll have a 15 16th integral smooth bore when you take off the tip. And again, that's 50 PSI at 185 gallons per minute, which will make everybody's job so much easier. So after we move past the panel, we're going to talk about incidents involving more than one line and going to master streams. Now we're going to go to back of the apparatus. And just some tips. So you pull in on a major incident, okay? Now we're going to take, for instance, two scenarios, kind of both the same. First one is a three-story, which we have many in town, wood frame, combination commercial, our apartment occupancy in very tight proximity to their exposures. Also treated the same way is a two and a half story double home, again, within one to two feet of its exposure. So let's say you pull in and you have heavy fire load. Chances are the operations chief after consultation with the incident commander, this is gonna be the first line, especially if you have a ton of exterior fire. This is our step gun. It has a inch and three eighths tip on it, which is 500 gallons per minute at 80 PSI. It's supplied by a three inch line. Now that's interesting to remember because later on you'll see what we're getting to at the end of this. Again, 500 gallons per minute. So that could be your first line off. Then you want lines into your exposure building. So chances are, the next thing's coming off is our leader line, which is again 200 feet to a gate at Y, 500 gallons per minute. That's going to be supplying two two inch lines, 210 gallons per minute at 50 psi, and they're both smooth bore inch, one inch tips. So now you're at 500 and at 400, you're at 900 gallons per minute. We're working towards that 2,000 gallons per minute mark. Let me note here that I realize that centrifugal pump will take in as much water and distribute as much water as it can get. But for cons being conservative, we're gonna go with that 2,000 gallon per minute hydrant. Okay, we can have some more, we can have some less. So that's gone. So the operations sector decides that we need more flow. So we're gonna go here now to an inch and three quarter tip. Okay, when we go to that inch and three quarter tip, we're 800 gallons per minute again at 80 PSI. We have to run another three inch line into that. We're not gonna run as two and a half, which we have a 
two and a half inch pre-connect there, we're gonna run another three inch line into that. Now you're looking back here and you say, well that three inch is taken, that three inch is taken, where do I get my next three inch? And that's when we go around to the side. On the side here, we have another 150 feet of three inch. It's off a chick sand swivel inside. Disconnect the water thief, take that off and run that. This is a grab and run. This is not because of the way it's configured in there. It is not a shoulder load and run that second line in. So now you're gonna get your 800 gallons per minute. So you're eight and four, which gives you 1200 gallons per minute. Into the commander talks to operations and says, we need to supply the ladder pipe. All right, our ladder pipe is a one and a half inch tip, 600 gallons per minute and get an 80 PSI. It is fed by two three inch lines into a single three inch that supplies the tip, okay? Again, we're dealing with that old Seagrave rule that we still abide by. No more than 80 PSI, no more than 800 gallons per minute, no more than 80 degrees of an angle, okay? So that's what we're going with. We're going with the 600, gives us a little bit of a margin of error, okay? So now, how do we get to that point? How do we get the line from here to there? We already used our three inch. Obviously, we don't want to use a two and a half, okay? Because that's only going to give us at most 300 gallons per minute. Nowadays with the testing, they say more, but we're going to be conservative. So here's a trick. Five inch is tested to 185, I mean to 200 PSI, okay? So what we're going to do is, and if Junior will follow me here, <laughs> we're going to use our five inch, okay? Our five inch, as I have said before, we already have our lines pre-calculated as to what goes on with the tip. The truck engineer is going to say to the engine engineer, I need 170 PSI to flow my 600 gallons per minute. Again, it's already pre-calculated, different lengths, but we're going to go with the, the typical example here. So that's well within the range of our LDH. Our firefighters are going to advance the LDH whatever is needed, tie into the discharge off the rear or the LDH discharge off the side. And when he does, he's going to tie into a distributor. Now there's two distributors on this rig, one in the pump operator's compartment and one off top. And if you would hand that there to Nate, he'll show you what it looks like. As you can see, that distributor is a five inch intake. It can distribute to another uh, national standard mail. They'll distribute out to that. There's three inch on the truck. There's enough for the ladder pipe operation, and there's also enough to tie in off of that distributor. So again, we're keeping below that 200 PSI, which is our safety margin, and we're able to still supply that. 600 now brings you right around that 2,000 gallon per minute mark. We saw some room. If we have to, we can still flow that two and a half. Two and a half is about, it, about, it is 310 gallons per minute. It's an inch and a quarter tip, again at 50 PSI. Again, it's going to give us a workable line. We're going to be close at that point, okay? That's going to be the questionable uh, situation based upon the hydrant. So if Junior follows me. Two other things then before we conclude for this little training snippet is A, in this bag, one of the most important things that we have, and if you can just show it in there, is our hydrant ball valve. Because our first line off of a hydrant is generally, if you're in proximity to hydrant, is off the front. You want to tie that in to your two and a half inch outlet on your hydrant so that you're able to run another five inch in so you can get the maximum flow of that hydrant. If you want to get that 2,000 gallons per minute, you have to be able to get both of those lines into the pump. And last but not least, your pump operator now has to really be on his toes because Obviously, if you're looking at all these discharge pressures, they're all under 185 PSI. So what he's gonna to have to do is, is make sure that once he charges that line to the ladder pipe, that he's going to be able to adjust these inward so that again, the lines are not overpressurized. Again, real short snippet, just some things for you to think about in the case we have a major incident where we're flowing a lot of heavy streams and uh, master stream devices. We hope it helps. We hope everybody's still safe. As you can see today, we were practicing all our OSHA requirements and CDC and making sure that we were all 
you know, following the guidelines to make sure that we all stay healthy. Again, stay healthy, stay safe. Thanks for listening. Appreciate it.